The Chinese Communist Party has a history of persecuting religions. And with nationalism on the rise, anti-Semitism is becoming increasingly common. Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. Be sure to like and leave a comment, it helps the algorithm, and make sure you're subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. And since YouTube also hasn't been notifying people of new episodes, check back every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday for new episodes. The officially atheist Chinese Communist Party has a long history of persecuting religions. Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, and Falun Gong. Now, the Chinese constitution guarantees freedom of belief, just like it guarantees freedom of speech. In other words, only on paper. And while China officially recognizes five religions, Buddhism, Taoism, Islam, Protestantism, and Catholicism, the Communist Party keeps a tight grip on them with state-run places of worship. Because why separate church and state when you can control the church with the state? But you may notice Judaism was not included in that list. So how are the Jewish people treated in China? Well, if you know anything about history, asking how the Jewish people are treated anywhere at any point has a 50-50 shot of not being great. As for in China, well, let me introduce you to the Red Swastika Society. It's actually a charitable society that uses the swastika because the swastika has been a Buddhist symbol for thousands of years, meaning, the tiny mustache wasn't the only thing Hitler ruined for everyone. So while China is full of swastikas, according to China's ambassador to Israel, there is no anti-Semitism in China. Well, at least he was the former ambassador to Israel, before he was mysteriously found dead in his Tel Aviv home. Look, sometimes communist officials just mysteriously die. Now there are only about 2,500 Jews living in China. You might think, that's not enough people to bother persecuting. But you'd be wrong. And like every other religious minority, they too are under attack in China. Their synagogues have been destroyed, their scriptures have been erased from walls. But the Chinese Communist Party isn't just going after the tiny number of Jews living in China. They're supporting an anti-Semitic campaign against all the Jews, the millions of Jews living in places like the US and Israel. Anti-Semitic tropes and sentiments have been propagated on Chinese state media, encouraged by top Chinese diplomats, and rehashed by well-known Chinese political commentators. And here's the thing. The Communist Party keeps a tight grip on speech, especially political speech. So according to China expert Tuvia Goering, a new wave of Jew hatred in China must be seen as not only tolerated, but openly promoted. For instance, in 2021, state-run CGTN ran a piece called Why Does the U.S. Act as a Diplomatic Shield for Israel? The answer? A secret Jewish cabal controlling the U.S. government. After Israel accused CGTN of blatant anti-Semitism, CGTN seems to have deleted the video. But nothing is ever truly dead on the internet. So here it is. The video quality isn't great. Some people believe that U.S. pro-Israel policy is traceable to the influence of wealthy Jews in the U.S. and the Jewish lobby on U.S. foreign policy makers. Indeed, there are over 5 million Jewish people in the U.S. On the rich list of Forbes, there are 18 Jews in the top 40 in the U.S. Jews dominate finance, media, and internet sectors. I'm not too worried about that, though. I mean, when has a country full of swastikas saying the Jews control all of the world's wealth ever led to anything bad? Again, that video was from the Communist Party's mouthpiece. And their oversimplistic anti-Semitic narrative doesn't even have basic facts right. There are more than 7 million Jews in the US, not 5 million. And there are only 8 Jews, not 18, among the top 40 people on the Forbes World's Billionaires list. And keep in mind, that's a world billionaire list, not just the US. Might those factual slip-ups be an attempt to make Jewish influence in the US seem more disproportionate, perhaps even sinister? 
Why do so many anti-Semitic tropes treat Jewish people like Batman villains? That makes no sense. Especially since Batman is the most Hebrew hero of all time. He's rich, intelligent, and driven by guilt. That's why he has a teen sidekick. You're 13. That means you're a man now, Robin. Happy Bar Mitzvah. But that one state-run media report is just scraping the surface of anti-Semitism in China. I'll tell you more about why the CCP is pushing anti-Semitism after the break. Welcome back. Join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army. If you like the show and want to help us continue to expose the CCP, all it takes is as little as a dollar per episode on Patreon. You can also set a monthly limit. Or you can join our exclusive censorship-free social media platform on Locals. Links to both are below. Anti-Semitism is on the rise in China. And that must make Jewish people feel truly betrayed after all the times they ordered Chinese food on Christmas. And anti-Semitism is being heavily pushed by political commentators on the Chinese internet. Take the nationalist influencer Yu Li, who goes by the pen name Sima Nan. He's a party member, ex-journalist, lecturer, and government employee. Well, in this piece, he basically claims Israel was behind 9-11. They say 9-11 was bin Laden's doing, but those hijackers were almost all from Saudi Arabia, and what is the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel? Simanan also talks about the Israeli Zionist butchers-backed Jewish capital groups. Celebrated academic Fudan University professor Wan Yang talks about the Jewish mindset that everything is commercial. And the most successful parasitic business model of the Jews was nothing else but to control the key technologies, the finance, and the logistics, and make everyone dependent on them. Influential university professor Zhang Wenmu asks, Why has Ukraine become Jewified? And why has Israel put up with it? It's because Wall Street wanted to plant a quasi-Israel in this problematic European region. So Putin says Ukraine is Nazified, while Wenmu says it's actually Jewified. That's, uh... That's a whole spectrum right there, isn't it? Perhaps the worst is Lu Kuan. He's an incredibly popular Chinese internet commentator. He has 15 million subscribers across several Chinese social media platforms. Here's a piece he wrote called, What Should We Make of the Jews? Considering how racist this piece is, the answer to that question may have well have been lampshades. It's a smattering of medieval anti-Semitic tropes, protocols of the elders of Zion, and Mein Kampf aka the holy trinity of propaganda used to bash people who don't believe in the holy trinity. Lou has written extensively about the Jews. For instance, claiming that they were the ones really pulling the strings in the opium wars of the 19th century. According to Lou, Jews are manipulators, penny pinchers, loan sharks, and drug dealers. The worst, though, are the American Jews, who took control of the three cornerstones of American society namely finance, media, and culture. Man, if you make a list of things Jewish people are accused of, it sounds like the lyrics to We Didn't Start the Fire. Now again, keep in mind that the Chinese internet is heavily controlled and censored by the Chinese Communist Party. Liu could not be making these claims unless the Chinese government didn't see anything wrong with them. For instance, the Chinese embassy in Japan tweeted an anti-Semitic version of this Grim Reaper meme wearing an American flag with a scythe colored like the Israeli flag. And he's going door to door, killing people in the Middle East. So why is all this anti-Semitism happening? Well, the Chinese Communist Party is becoming increasingly nationalistic and isolationist. So the idea that a sinister, shadowy group is controlling foreign countries, particularly America, to undermine China is great propaganda for a regime that wants to cut off China from the rest of the world and make its population fearful of anything foreign. Of course, there actually is a shadowy group using finance to control foreign countries, including America, but it's not the Jews. It's the Chinese Communist Party. And now, as a thank you to the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, I'll answer one of their questions. Today's question comes from Daniel Atkinson, a brand new supporter on Patreon. Hi from Australia. 
Our Defense Minister Richard Marles met with his Chinese counterpart a few days ago and has been quoted saying Australia doesn't support Taiwan independence and we support the One China policy. In my opinion, I find that cowardly and potentially dangerous. What's your guys' thoughts? Love the show and the humor, by the way. Well, thank you, Daniel. So unfortunately, that line about Taiwan independence and the One China policy seemed to be the standard. I've talked about how in May, the Biden administration removed the line, we do not support Taiwan independence from the State Department's page on Taiwan, but this month added it back in. And yes, I think this is a cowardly and extremely dangerous line to take. Strategic ambiguity, as they call it, did not prevent Russia's invasion of Ukraine, it fostered it. Same with Taiwan. You stop a bully by standing up to him, not by being wishy-washy. And the Chinese Communist Party is a bully. I know there's a new administration in Australia and people want to know how will it handle China. And it's been unclear. On the positive side of things, the first thing the new Prime Minister did was to travel to a Quad meeting. That's an alliance of the US, Australia, Japan, and India aimed at countering China. But there's also been rumors of a China reset. Just have to wait and see how they actually act towards China. Thanks for your question and your support, Daniel. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, the links are below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.